Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our Granada, the Riri Conquista campaign, potentially with AI bonuses. And uh, I'm not sure yet if we're going to call it the Riri Conquista campaign, if we're just going to call it the AI bonuses campaign. We'll see. But um, I was thinking that there's a chance we could possibly make more money right now by collecting from trade in Genoa with our second merchant. So we're going to give it a shot. Uh, the guy who is in Tunis, the mark right now is 0.82 ducats. So let's see if we can make a little bit more. It's possible. Uh, the verdict is not quite, but it's close. If we had any more ships there, or if we could really benefit from it at all, um, go back to doing what we were doing before then. All right, I mean, min-maxing 0.3 ducats a month, it's kind of, <laughs> it's not really going to make any difference, is it? Oh, jeez. I'll admit I'm recording the second episode before I've had a chance to read your comments on the first episode, so I don't yet know um, what your thoughts are, but I'm very curious to read those comments. You'll never be able to do it. You're crazy. I am crazy. At least a little bit. Well, we have less, less than a year to go until the truce is up. He's got three claims on me outright. He's also fabricated a claim on Aragon, though. So hopefully we get lucky and uh, maybe something changes. Morocco is allied to rival Clemson. So we're pretty unlikely to be able to get that alliance now. Anyway, we can get the royal marriage with uh, Tlemcen. Let's at least wait till this end of the month. Um, all right, well, we're going to go for the royal marriage. We still are not quite high enough to actually get the alliance. We have common rivals. They like that about us. The truce expires with you in February, so we have two two months left to actually secure our relationships. Um, hmm. I don't think improving relations with England is actually going to matter, but might as well try. Portugal has rival Tlemcen. Interesting. That might make us potentially friends. Enemy of enemy. How? How did that immediately tick up? It's still negative 99. Yep. Watch all these fancy little boats here that I just built. I'm just going to immediately die. Probably. Zero reasons for an alliance. I really could use this alliance right now, just so you know. And our truce just expired. So obviously we're going to have to slow the game down. Um, you know, like any reason for you to join the, uh, you know, ally me, please? Please? I need a friend? At least one friend. Obviously he's going to declare, like, tomorrow if I don't have any friends. Come on. Come on, game. Give me one friend. There's the alliance. Alright, come back from Portugal for now. One, two, three, four days. We got an alliance. Cool. And I wonder if we just declare an offensive war and try to get get something going before we lose all of our land. Because we're, we're such a small country that he can easily just take everything that I own, you know, in one war. We're 45% war score. He's got claims on everything that we have. It's potentially game over if I just don't do anything. Hmm. Just thinking out loud right now. There's a little mechanic that you can maybe possibly exploit where if you declare war... In, in, in supporting rebels, which granted with AI bonuses there's very likely to be any rebels, but if you declare war with support rebels CB and then surrender to them with the support rebels thing, they will say yes because it's 100 war score even though it ends up enforcing on them. So I'm just thinking it might be a weird way we could exploit the game a little bit right now in order to get a fresh 100% uh, percent peace deal, meaning a 15 year truce to buy some time here, but it, it's probably 
not even going to be an option. Unless we see, like, the Castilian Civil War fire or something, or maybe the Lombard War. We just you know, declare on England, which gets us at war with everyone. Take the stability hit, and then um, surrender to him. I don't even know if that would work, actually. Support rebels. There are none that have actually revolted. 0% unrest. Well, of course. I mean, look at this unrest. Negative 12.7%. I'd say there's pretty uh, pretty much no chance whatsoever they're going to ever have any bonuses, ever any problems. Portugal's declared war on Morocco. It's a good thing we're not allies with them. I'm assuming they will call England in. Or, sorry, uh, yeah, they're going to call in at least Castile and Aragon. So Castile's a little bit busy. Maybe that'll buy us time. If uh, they are at war with all of that, now would be a good time for us to declare as well. We would be neutral to... Castile. We could wait. We could wait until both the navy and the army is dead. And then just swoop in and take Clemson's capital. That would be a good opportunity, actually, to maybe not be dead right away. I still think that Castile would show up and just take all my land. Don't get me wrong. I think that would happen. Oh, hey, fantastic. Who needs, uh, who needs prestige, right? If I were to declare, I'm assuming since you're um, enemies, Tunis, that you would you would join him. Morocco would defend. We would need this to be no. Morocco's already in debt, and they already have war exhaustion. Did they already get stack wiped? Uh, let's see. The war score's at zero. How'd you get so much war, war exhaustion already? What the hell? Damn, Sayuta fell quickly. How'd they do that? What the... I mean, that's insane. They just declared, didn't they? We're on speed three. I mean, like, three months have passed, and they've already got this fort. Oh my gosh, you know what? It was mothballed. It had to have been mothballed. There's no other way they could have taken it that fast. How fortunate for them. A mothballed capital fort? We're going to pay attention to the fort map mode. It's very interesting. Even at war, Clemson has their capital mothballed. All right, let's pay close attention to the Clemson army. Clemson has got 13k troops. Now is not the time. I think we should get more claims so that we have more choices. Um, I don't think we want to border Morocco. Let's fabricate on Wehran. Not the best province in the world, but it is probably better. It's a defensive alliance, yet he will join the war against his rival. So we can't use him against anyone really but his rivals. Which is one guy, basically. We do have two more naval force limit. I mean, I've got to try to eke out as much money as I can from trade. So, I mean, we will have to... I wonder if having this fort's worth anything at all. I mean, that's eh, probably worth it. It's going to slow down the inevitable, but... 69 ships there, that's cool. Just out of curiosity, I wonder what the uh, the force limit of some of these guys is. Timbers have 87 force limit, France has 57. England at 52. These armies, like, the thing is, I think when you turn on AI bonuses that the, uh, the armies still start off the same size as they would normally be. So it's going to take them a couple years, which it's already been four years, for them to actually build up to their new force limits and get new, ma new manpower caps satisfied. So... Something to think about. Clemson's still got 15k troops. They are in the war. Are you guys... Attacker against Morocco. Ceuta being occupied is not worth much. They've only won three battles. War gold. Defender controls garb. I wonder if they're having a hard time actually landing troops. I mean, Portugal has plenty of men, right? 24,000. Castile's at 42,000. With me, with my minor 8. Granted, the one nice thing about AI bonuses, aside from all like the manpower and all the other bullshit that they get, they don't just get like better discipline or like better generals, um, which is good. We can actually fight. If we have 10,000 men and they have 6,000 men or 10,000 men, you know, like it's an equal fight, we can potentially win equal fights. It's not like CK2, where you just have to have, like, twice as many troops as they do to even stand a chance. So, it could work. Oh, right, that's right, we're a Muslim, I remember. We have, uh, 30% piety right now. What kind of decisions do we have? 
Then they can be passed because our character's complete crap. Nice. Save the Andalusian people of Cordoba. That's so many boats. So many freaking heavies out there. It's terrifying. So what we would want is for Tunis' army to get stack wiped, Morocco to not be willing to defend them, and then uh, and then we would join. Well, unfortunately, though, these guys seem like they're not having any real spot that they can land. You know, I'm going to unmoth all these transports just so we can watch this war. Our truce is now expired with Aragon and Portugal. However, they don't have any claims on us, so we're safe from them for the moment. It's just Castile. Ottomans have declared another war. So, I wonder, I mean, how's this war going to resolve if, Mar if Portugal never lands any troops? Eventually they'll get 25 war score, and they'll probably end up white piecing. Which means that Castile's not going to lose any men. And then as soon as that war ends, Castile will declare on me. They'll call in Portugal. Hmm. We've also got to remember that Clemson has Mazab as a as a ally or vassal. No, it's just an ally of Morocco. So we declare one on Tlemcen, we don't even have to worry about them. Okay, that's good. And how strong are you? 16k troops? No, I just have to wait and see. That's the that's the game we gotta play right now. We gotta wait and see and hope that uh, somehow Portugal, Castile, Aragon. I mean, come on, between the three of them, certainly someone should be able to land some troops down here, right? Are they just not even asking for military access from, like, a neutral party? Like, come on, come land over here. You can't just land directly on it, just land over here and march over. I mean, it's just outstandingly stupid if they aren't smart enough to actually do anything. I would love to just be able to attack Castile and survive. But I don't think it's going to happen. I already have a powerful ally in Tunis, so I'm I'm so weak that the game dictates that I can only have one ally. That's a that's a bad sign. Here I was thinking maybe we could swing like an alliance web and take advantage of our allies having the AI bonuses as well to try to make up for the fact that we don't have the bonuses. But no, no, we're not strong enough for that yet. We uh we need more. All right, do we want to gain piety or lose piety? I mean, honestly, I think that having piety and having, like, a tiny bit more morale of armies is not going to make any real difference for us. So we might as well go for the increased lack of piety. Not to mention, I mean, just we want to be on one extreme or the other. By the way, how's our autonomy looking? I, I didn't even think to check that in the previous one. That is 0% across the board. Unsurprising. It's quite the war you got there, Portugal. I mean, Portugal, how many navy... I'm assuming you have a fairly strong navy. Can you not land some troops, please? Portugal has 37... 19 transports. It could drop a 19 stack, like, down here. <laughs> so apparently, AI bonuses makes the AI stupider. <laughs> I don't understand what the hell they're doing. It's weird. Watch your provinces. Minus 200. I think there's any way we can appease them? I doubt it. Well, we might as well go up to speed 4, because uh, it looks like this war is going to stag stagnate for like 5 years before this war actually ends. All it's coming down to really is just the, uh, the ticking war score. Very well. Well, in the meantime, we're getting some claims. But I can't make any good. I can't do anything with them. Speaking of claims, do we need to actually focus on anything? I don't know. 
coin cost for this province if we were actually able to take it? 182. 182, 170 is 250. Like, we'd be able to take this land. I don't want to slow down our ability to get to tech 4. I don't necessarily want to slow down our admin point generation either. Having tech 4 is not going to save us from Castile if they declare. Do we want to do the same thing again? Lose another 10 legitimacy. Sure. Who needs legitimacy when you have all same culture, all same religion provinces? Like, it makes no difference. We have no real unrest here. We don't need the legitimacy right now. Granted, legitimacy does affect our uh, diplomatic reputation. So that is something to consider. But we're close enough. It's still rounding up to one. We don't want to go much lower than 75, though. Yeah, I think what's going to end up happening here is just going to be a white piece. Or possibly, if they wait long enough, they might even have to give war reps or concede defeat to Morocco. Oh, lucky you, Tunis, with your ally, your alliance, alliance to the Ottomans. Strong enough to have two alliances, huh? You cheating bastard. We're far, obviously far too far away. I can't, like, grant military access and, like, try to make them use my land. I can't, I can't really influence this war in any way right now. I suppose, you know what we can do? We can embargo him. Yes, let's do that. That'll make me feel better about myself. Just so you know, Clemson, you are embargoed. You know what else? I'm going to insult you. I wonder if maybe... Okay, this, this might work. What if... What if we were able to, like, get a naval-based war? The navies of these three are completely screwing this guy. If I could get a trade conflict based on blockading provinces, I could actually use my navy to blockade him and get a 25% ticking war score. I wouldn't be able to take any provinces without actually sieging anything, but... It's something I could do, I guess. It's just the only point. Takes a little while for our, our guys to get home there, doesn't it? Morocco's far too interested in defending. I wonder how much it's going to affect the AI with having reduced interest rate. Like, it might make the AI a lot better. Really might. Maybe I should just tweak the bonuses. Like, give them a couple things, you know? I'm going to continue to improve with you. What would it take to justify trade conflict? 100% of the total trade power on the trade node where you have at least 10% trade power. They have 0% in Tunis where you have 0%. I mean, they should have a fair bit in Safi, right? Clemson has... 21%. So what if I, instead, steered from here, and we could potentially send all of our boats there for the moment. All I'm really thinking is that it's a way that I could get war score, for sure. I would still be relying on Tunis, basically, to be able to beat both of them, and I don't think they can do that. There's 40,000 troops right here. So, it's not going to work. It's just, just something to think about. You know, it's a mental exercise here. Meanwhile, we're sitting at full morale, just hoping that uh, we can we can do something. Also, um, you know what? Our character is so bad that even if we got to end up with a Regency Council, we should probably just make him into a general. Cross your fingers. Yeah, it's about what I would have expected. Hmm. We have a Regency Council in Morocco. 
quite a while. And yet, the AI is just completely derping out here and just giving him ticking war score totally to the top. I bet they might even surrender and return that core to him. War score cost of Seoto is only 10%. They could take it. They probably will. Portugal's going to get down to low enthusiasm. They're going to have negative 15 war score. And Morocco's going to demand that core back. That's what's going to happen. Which means there's no opportunity here. Morocco's going to continue to defend Tunis. If it was just Tunis... Sorry, if it was just Tlemcen, I think that Tunis can beat Tlemcen. But with Morocco protecting them, Tunis has 21, and Tlemcen has 15, yeah. In a straight-up fight, my guy beats your guy, but not if Morocco's going to help. And unfortunately, since they're both in the war, I can't, like, try to ally Morocco right now and then get called into the war. You know, like, enforce peace, because then I'd be allies in a war. I can't declare war on Tlemcen that way. You know, there's nothing really sneaky I can do there. I think it's fairly hopeless at this point, but we're going to continue giving it a shot. For now, though, let's take a break here, and uh, as always, if you want to leave your comments down below, I would appreciate it. It'll be interesting to see what you have to say. So, thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.